Now, I made this little um, diagram, so don't laugh at it too hard. Here you have your isocyanate and your resin. This is the hardening agent, and this is the actual chemistry of the foam that you are paying money for. The cell structure and the insulation that you want in your walls is all found in the B material. The A material, the isocyanate, just hardens it. Now before you go off on isocyanates, understand that they're used in the product Loctite and most major plywood manufacturers are using isocyanates to glue the sheets together in the plant. So this product is mixed one to one by volume, equal parts volumetrically of A and B. When they come together, they form heat. Now normally we put heat into the product to help speed this reaction up, but without adding any heat, if you were to pot mix it or mix it by hand, heat would be formed and that's exothermic reaction due to the polyols polymerizing and chains of molecules linking up and forming uh, multiple structures, forming the plastic. That heat given off affects a blowing agent that is inside the resin in a liquid state and it causes a phase change to happen and it goes from liquid to gas and as it gases it's going to puff open and blow open the cells that we want so that instead of a hard plastic like a truck box coating or an epoxy coating on the floor instead we're going to have a cellular plastic now the governor and the initiator for the speed of that chemical reaction is our catalyst. It's mixed in right in the middle with the blowing agent uh, as well as other products inside there such as fire, retardants, surfactants, um, and plasticizers. So the catalyst, think of it as the gas pedal in your car and the brake. You can either speed the reaction up or you can slow the reaction down and retard it. So the catalyst mediates and governs uh, how quickly it's going to convert from liquid to gas to cell structure. The cell structure is going to be trapped inside the plastic, inside the polyols, and it's those cells with that gas trapped inside the, the cell structure that we want inside our foam. And that's what causes it to rise and then to set into place to have the final product that we want. So that's the entire chemistry of what's going on. Obviously, we need to be one-to-one -one in ratio. If we have too much B or resin, we call that resin-rich. And if we have too much isocyanate, that's iso-rich. If we are off ratio, if we had two-to-one or three-to-one, well, then it's not going to cure. The product chemistry-wise is designed to have equal parts of A and B. And when they meet with the right amount of blowing agent and the right amount of catalyst, then you have the final product which is meeting all of the physical properties that you the consumer the building owner the homeowner want in your foam we do not do anything with the chemistry we can't add to it we can't take away from it we don't do anything but tear the seal off the drum stick the drum pump into it and then begin spraying we cannot thin the ratio out we cannot add something to it trim it change it top it up with a garden hose none of it it either works or it doesn't and it's very straightforward with the equipment the equipment is either pumping it atomizing it and spraying it or it's not it's making sludge so if something is off ratio you're going to have a problem or if something happens within the chemistry or the catalyst then it would affect the cell structure and obviously the potential for these products none of which you want to consume on your own you're not going to want to eat or smell or drink blowing agent or catalyst these individual components are not edible for consumption that's a no-brainer but when they are designed to work as a unit as the entire chemistry is designed they are to be neutralized and inert and do no harm to you when the final product is cured and in place.